Nathan Stapleton was left paralysed from the shoulders down after an accident on the footy field. His wife Kate was told to prepare for the worst, but their love gave Nathan the strength to fight and nothing was going to stop him being at the birth of his second son. Tonight, the moment he realised he's the luckiest man alive. You don't ever expect to find yourself in this situation, but um, I'm just so proud of his determination and strength and just how strong he's been for us as well with his like personality and I can tell it's crippling for him, for his mindset and everything, but he's just staying so strong for us. almost 16 minutes and then to still here to be with my family and everything like I'm just so grateful because I still get to watch my boys grow up. And that was the scariest thing for me is because I, lo I love my boys. <laughs> and I love my wife so I didn't want to miss out on that. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. Nathan and Kate Stapleton are each other's rock. They've been together for 15 years. They've shared half of their lives together. The husband and wife are inseparable. For her to still be strong and by my side, I consider myself probably one of the luckiest men in the life. <laughs> it's an extraordinary comment that shows Nathan is a lot more than a former NRL star. Stapleton has both of their measures. He played 61 games and scored 17 tries for the Cronulla Sharks, a highlight of an impressive career. The scoreline growing to embarrassing proportions as Nathan Stapleton grabbed a career high four tries. Now that's something for Stapleton to shout about in his 50th game. He's no stranger to injury. Keep your eye out for the knee to the head. But never made a fuss. A few bumps and bruises there, your wrist. It's going to be all right, you think? Yeah, it should be all right, mate. I'm about to get a needle, so hopefully that'll cure it. <laughs> After retiring from professional rugby league, Nathan and Kate got married, welcomed Harry, and were living life happily on a farm in country New South Wales. But on April 9 this year, their lives changed forever. Nathan was playing his first and only game for Burua Goldies in West Wyalong. It's like your normal, typical game. I was actually enjoying having fun. I was playing with Kate's brother, which is what we've always wanted to do. But in the second half, Nathan was almost killed. The last thing I remember from the game was Kate's brother's hands in his head and then hit me on the ground. That's when I knew something, like he wasn't good. His neck was broken and his spinal cord significantly injured. I was pronounced dead on sight. I was gone for 16 minutes. It's hard to think about that because, I, you know, Everyone was thinking the worst, obviously. Luckily, off-duty nurse Louise McCabe was there. She kept Nathan alive until an ambulance arrived. If she wasn't there, I wouldn't be here to tell the story. Kate was seven months pregnant. At hospital, she was told to prepare for the worst. They advised me that it's highly, highly likely that Nathan was going to have severe brain damage, which for me was worse than any of his yeah, neck fractures. But Nathan wasn't going anywhere without a fight. When I finally come out of sedation and realised what was going on, it was, yeah, it was tough. Early on, I just thought I was in a bad dream. I woke up and thought, this is just, this isn't happening. Nathan's mind was intact, but he was paralysed from the shoulders down. The um, doctors basically said that, you know, you're not going to have any movement, you're not going to be able to walk again. Um, it's something that no one wants to hear. So it was like my worst nightmare had come. It was reality. And then obviously 
seeing Kate and seeing my family come down and everyone being so upset as well because everything was so, so fresh. Even though he was so highly sedated, the fact that he could um, say a couple of things and he was still getting really pissed off in situations that I knew, <laughs> I was like, it's still Nate. And yeah. it was such a relief. It was the biggest relief we've had in the whole experience for me um, was when I realised that, yeah, I hadn't lost him and his personality. But while there was some relief, Nathan was grieving his body and his former life. I had to make a choice. I could either sit here and feel sorry for myself and uh, bring everyone down with me and everyone be on my level. Or I could suck it up, accept it for, for what it is and, and focus on the things that I can do. And that was being at the birth of their second son. In my mind, I wasn't even pregnant. It wasn't happening. We just didn't have really time to consider it. And I think <laughs> that was getting witnessed from um, Nathan's amazing team. And that's when they were like, where are you having the baby? I was like, I don't know where I'm having the baby. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> my biggest fear was obviously not having Nath there. So Nathan's ICU team at Sydney's Prince of Wales Hospital and the adjoining Royal Hospital for Women moved mountains to make it happen. I felt so strongly about the fact that Nathan had to attend. This was, I think it's a right, like a basic right, and it's about his dignity and their, their whole experience as a family. Clinical nurse consultant Steph Rhodes planned the massive team effort, making sure staff and equipment would be available to get Nathan into the birth suite when Kate went into labour. I've worked in ICU for about 10 years and I've never even heard of this kind of thing happening. And to be honest, it's not really a, a situation that arises too often. It's a, it's a pretty um, remarkable and, and pretty rare situation. Is she all right? Yeah, no, she's a, she's a trooper, so well, she's doing great. Like any husband, he was there whispering words of encouragement, supporting his wife every step of the way. Kate delivering little Angus. The couple say he's their good luck baby. special was it for you, Nath, to be there? We're very thankful and blessed that we could be there together um, at the birth and it's something that we'll never forget. But with the miracle moment came mixed emotions. The one thing you want to do when you're having your second child in it is to comfort your wife and physically sort of thing, like hold a hand. And, but I, I just couldn't do it, but I got to witness the whole thing and I still got to hold my boy and I still got to kiss my wife and tell her how amazing she was. So it was, it was, yeah, bittersweet. You got one hell of a wife here, Nate. She's um, incredible. Um, you know, I've, I'm in awe of how she's done it and um, still able to look after our little boy, Harry, and support her mum and, um, and me all at the same time. It was a huge mission yes. for the two hospitals to come together to make yeah. sure Nate was at the birth. What would you like to say? Oh, just thank you. Um, I threatened th that we'd be having the baby in the ICU room, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm just forever grateful and just a huge thank you to both the hospitals. And the incredible experience wasn't lost on the dedicated angels around them. I can't be prouder as a nurse manager of my team. Um, they are outstanding. And the birth of Angus was 
such an amazing, uplifting moment for the whole unit. Everyone stepped up and went above and beyond. ICU nurse manager Megan Pinfold says the full extent of Nathan's injury won't be known for another year, but that his pre-injury health and mental strength is making a world of difference. We're pretty confident that he will unfortunately be on the ventilator forever. But his pre-injury fitness was superb and on top of that he was working as a farmer as well so he is super fit pre-op but his mental attitude and this is a big mental game now his mental attitude is also phenomenal and he's learnt that from the hard work that he's put in over the years to get to the level in rugby league that he got to. This will be life for the Stapletons for the next little while. Doctors aren't sure how much, if any, movement Nathan will get back below his neck. But for now, these moments are all that matters to this incredible family. Hey, this is obviously the inspiration wall. Yep, this is um, basically my purpose. So, uh, every time I was feeling down or whatever, I just look up and all well, this would just remind me why and how I'm getting through it. Do you think this has just really put life into perspective? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> the second it happened, everything gets put in perspective. You realise, yeah, the, not everything that you were stressing about before is so insignificant. We have a healthy family, I have an incredible husband, and that's our biggest, that's all we need. Nathan's now getting used to his new wheelchair, which he controls with his chin and also his laptop which he commands with facial expressions and voice to text. The family's looking forward to eventually getting Nathan out of hospital and back to the country where they love to live. Even though toddler Harry has adapted better than they ever expected to dad being in hospital. Does he know daddy's injured? Over time, now he's just, he's just normal. Yeah. So, and it's, it's so beautiful because, um, for a toddler to understand that dad's okay and that, that means the world to me. The injury, we can't change it. Um, like it is what it is. Um, it's not great, you know. No, no one wants to be um, where I'm sitting, but at the end of the day, we have so much to look forward to. Like, I've still got a beautiful wife. I've got two beautiful boys um, and I'm, I'm blessed that I can, I can still be there for them. Nathan and Kate say they couldn't have got to this point without the support of the community and their loved ones. It's a th massive thank you. Everyone's message, is, it, it does mean a lot. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> it's been an emotional roller coaster, to be honest. The chair, everything else doesn't bother me. If I've still got Nathan, his personality, that's all all I care about, so we're good. It is going to be different, and, and uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, there's still good and bad days to come. Like, it is still a roller coaster ride, but um, we're just blessed that we can still bring our boys up together. I've got no doubt I'm going to be happy. I've got too much to look forward to not to be happy. Nathan will need long-term support and around-the-clock care when he leaves hospital. An online fundraiser has been set up to help pay for his recovery and ongoing medical costs. The Sharks are also raising money with an auction and a yoga event. The details are on our website along with a message from Nathan and Kate to thank everyone for their support.